Here's our last scenario that we're going to learn about as far as sig figs go. Uh, how do you properly round your answers if you're doing multiplication or division? This type of math is the type of math you're going to do in chemistry almost all the time. So you really want to make sure you have the multiplication and division rules down. So first thing you're going to do is do the math like you always would. You'd pick up your calculator and solve the problem. So let's try this first guy. What if we were finding the area of a, a rectangle and we knew that one of the dimensions was 1.15 meters and the other one was 2.3 meters? If you were to throw that guy in your calculator, your calculator spits out 2.645 and our units would be meters squared, right? Meters times meters but your calculator doesn't know that you are using measurements that have error associated with them. So we have to round our answer to account for the fact that the length and the width aren't perfect. So what are we gonna do this time with multiplication and division? This time, we're gonna count the number of sig figs in our original measurements and then round the answer to make it have the same number of sig figs as the measurement with the smallest number of sig figs. So addition, subtraction, that guy we were looking at decimal places. Now we're looking at sig figs to help us to decide. So if I count the sig figs in my length and width dimensions, 1.15 has three sig figs. 2.3 only has two sig figs. So what that means is we want our answer to only have two sig figs, not two decimal places, two sig figs. So the number two would be a sig fig that was a measured number. And the number six was also measured somehow but we can't go past that because we need to match the worst number of sig figs over here. We only are allowed to keep two. So I'm gonna chop it right here. Since the number behind the chopping block is a four, that means I'm gonna leave this number in front of the chopping block alone as just 2.6. You are not gonna look past the four. You're not gonna say, well, behind the four is a five, so that rounds the five the four up to a five, and then it rounds the five up to, and it bumps the six up. Nope, okay? You just look for just the one number behind the chopping block, and that's all. So 2.6 meters squared would be our answer, right? We weren't sure about that three. We don't know. We don't know this five. So we can't show all those decimal places in our answer. If we wanted to switch this guy in a scientific notation, that would be really weird, honestly, because scientific notation is usually for really big or really small numbers, and this guy isn't really big or really small. Um, but technically, I guess you could say 2.6 times 10 to the zero. Anything to the zero power there is just one, so you're multiplying by one. What if we were finding the volume of a rectangular object. So we knew its length, its width, its height. If you were to throw those numbers in your calculator, your calculator would spit out 517.4208 cubic centimeters, right? Centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. But now we have to properly round our answer to make it match the measurement with the worst number of sig figs. So 2.08, that guy has three sig figs. You could look at that using both the right right rule or the sandwich rule. Either way, that guy's got three sig figs. 13.82 has four sig figs and 18 has two sig figs. So two is the worst, right, out of our three options there. So that means we're gonna keep two sig figs, not two decimal places, two sig figs. So the number five would count as a sig fig, and the number one would count as a sig fig, and then we have to chop it. 
So because there's a seven behind that chopping block, it's gonna nudge up my one to a two. The most common wrong answer I see people write down is 52. And if that's what you wrote down and you're thinking, shoot, I just did that, what's wrong with that? Well, you're rounding the number 517.4208. You wouldn't round the number 517 down to 52, right? Those numbers are nowhere close to one another. The number 517 is close to the number 520. And that zero, it's okay because that zero that I just threw on there is not a significant zero, right? It's not in a sandwich. It doesn't follow the right, right rule. So we still have our two sig figs just like we wanted our answer to have. But now it's the right scale. And so 520 cubic centimeters would be our final answer. I don't know why, but for some reason, if, it, if you think about it as if it was money, that tends to help people. So if you had $517, you're not going to trade somebody for $52, right? If we wanted to switch this answer and put it into scientific notation, anytime you're taking an answer in or out of scientific notation, we got to keep sig figs the same. So if this guy has two sig figs, that means our scientific notation answer can only have two sig figs. So we would write 5.2 times 10 to the second. We cannot say 5.20 times 10 to the second because then that zero is a right, right zero and we'd have three sig figs and that's too many. We can't do that, right? And then we want to make sure we keep our units on our answers. One more example. What if you were finding the density of an object? So you knew its mass, you knew its volume, and you divided those two answers. Well, if you throw that guy in your calculator, your calculator is going to spit out 0 0.00002 9, 7, 6. So decimal point, four zeros, two, six, nine, seven, six. And our units kind of running out of room there, grams over milliliters. That's what the calculator says. Now we've got to round it. So we have to count the sig figs in our original measurements. Point zero, zero, three, four, eight. The first zero does not count because he's to the left of the decimal and there's no sandwich, there's no bread on the other side, so he doesn't count. And then these couple of zeros here, they've, they're to the right of the decimal, but not to the right of anything significant. So we only have three sig figs here, the three, the four, and the eight. This bottom number also three sig figs. So that means we have to take our answer and make it only have three sig figs. So what I see a lot of students do in the beginning is they say, okay, three sig figs, one, two, three, chop. So my answer is 0, 0.000. If you're questioning that right now, you should be because the number 0, 0.000, that doesn't have any sig figs, does it? And we want our answer to have three sig figs. So we have to go where the sig figs are. Well, the sig figs don't even start until you get to the number two. So we're gonna keep the two, the six, the nine, and then chop. So when we chop it, the number behind the chopping block is five and up. So that's gonna nudge my nine up to a 10 which means we're gonna have a double bump situation. So we're gonna have 0 0.0002770. We get our three sig figs, the two, the seven, and the zero. And we would wanna have a unit on there. If we wanted to take that answer and put it into scientific notation, we want to keep sig figs the same, 
So I'm going to keep the 2, the 7, and the 0. And then I would have times 10 to the negative fifth small number, and then our unit. If you want a little bit more practice, in addition to the practice problems that are up on Schoology, there's a couple of helpful websites there that can kind of talk you through how to do uh, sig fig calculations and measurements and all these wonderful things we've been talking about the last few days.